Hello friends, you're with Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing 1830 and this is gonna be the last part of that series I guess and uh, well the bank will break in this turn I'm pretty in this in this cycle of operating rounds I'm pretty sure about that let's see how much is in there we got about thousand 2,000, that's about 4,000, well, something between 5 and 6, I guess. So I guess that, well, maybe it's going to be close, but I don't think so, actually. The, the New York is doing, I don't know, 600 or something. The B&O is doing about, I think, 400 or so. So these two alone make about a thousand. And then we got one, two, three, five other corporations, which make, let's say, about 300 uh, per run. So that's another 1,500. So we make about 2,500 per operating round. Uh, so after three operating rounds, we would then be at 7,500. And that will um, break the bank. I thought about, well, we start now with a new stock round, obviously. And there's, of course, a lot of money with the players now. Most of the players have more than 1,000 uh, bucks in cash. And there's only one share of the Canadian and one share of the Erie left. Uh, however, most people are also pretty much at their certificate limit. Only this guy here and that guy, they are allowed to buy two more shares. Question is now, is someone willing to start the Boston and Maine? I thought about that. But I think in the end it doesn't really pay off because there is only that one more operating round. And even though starting the corporation would bring a little more money into the bank, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it still will break. I mean, that could be an interesting choice, you know, to prolong the game a little bit. That might be, for example, in his interest, because he makes the best runs at the moment. So maybe it's worth a try if he says okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try to launch a new corporation buy shares for a hundred each and buy a new train for eleven hundred that might bring enough money into the bank to uh, to force us to play another cycle of operating rounds so, that's kind of interesting. Maybe he's actually willing to do that. He doesn't care too much. The others are also not terribly interested in this. However, his problem is if he starts the New York Central... Well, but that's he thought about making a connection here to 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 Boston uh, with the New York Central, so that he can make uh, an even better run. That would not be possible. Uh, 
if we have to place a dot here in Boston. But yeah, I mean, maybe it might be a good idea. I, I've got to make some calculations, really check how much money is in the bank and how big the runs will be. So uh, maybe it's actually worth uh, starting the Boston main simply to get more money into the bank so that we can play a little longer. Let's, let's see about that. So I calculated all the runs through and everything and I ended up with a prox if the if the Boston main should start then there would be probably an overall revenue per operating round of 3000 this is pretty much it now at the moment there are in here about Five between five and six thousand. If we would buy shares of the Boston Main and a train of the Boston Main, we would see another. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe close to two thousand going in. So there would be about eight thousand in there or something. But in the end, it's not enough. It's 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 the bank will break anyway because we got three operating rounds and that kills the 8,000 in the bank they would then fall in the last operating round so therefore we cannot prolong the game for another cycle and then it probably makes not a lot of sense to start the Boston main because if you do that if you start a corporation right now the president have to pay an additional hundred to get that train so he has to pay that that money from his private uh, cash pool and even if we started at a hundred first the share price will drop in the first operating round in the second one it goes up again so in the third one it will be then at 112 nobody can hold a lot of shares maybe two or three shares at that point. I mean, we could, of course, sell some of the weaker shares, but on the other hand, they give you also revenue at the moment. So, overall, maybe you make about 30 bucks or so, thanks to, uh, uh, thanks to the uh, risen share value. And we could probably do... Um, two runs when each of this gives you about I don't know maybe 200 or so uh, maybe 250 for your D train so that means you would get about let's say you have three shares so it's about 60 overall so it's another 120 so overall you would get about um, I don't know maybe about 200 bucks out of this whole action, right? I mean, not quite, maybe about close to 200 bucks out of this. But you have to invest 100 bucks for the train, so that reduces your, uh, your income from that by about... Yeah, you end up with about maybe 100 bucks win from this whole situation. Um, on the other hand, it is possible if some other people, for example, this guy, he could also buy shares and then sell them just for the fun of it, you know, and, and lower the share value. So in the end, you might even lose a little bit of money here. I don't think this is really worth it. You can make a little bit of money out of this. I mean, I might consider doing it. It, it, it. it could help me. On the other hand, if I don't do it as that player, for example, I could make a connection here to Baltimore with the New York Central and run through Baltimore and that little area here. So I would get an additional, a, a better revenue. I can make a better run and get more money out of that. 
So hey, I think I'm gonna go with the latter, you know, I don't really see a reason to start the Boston and Maine at that point. And the other people also don't. So I guess we're not seeing a lot happening in the operating in the stock round. Simply let's start here. This guy has the priority deal. Well, as I said, he's not going to start the Boston and Maine. He already holds 60% of the Erie and 60% of the Canadian. So he's not allowed to buy any shares here. This guy... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He is at his share limit. However, he, he's going to sell a share of the New York Haven for 67 bucks. And then He's going to buy a share of the Canadian for the par price of 100 because right now that share is already worth 160 so he makes money right away. So basically that means he's got to pay uh, 32 bucks and that's, uh, that's definitely a good deal. So this guy is also not at his share value, <coughs> at his um, certificate limit yet. He holds 11 certificates and can hold up to um, up to 13. So he's going to invest. Yeah, that's a question now. I mean, he could pay. The Erie goes for 67. At the moment, it's worth 68. So yeah, he's going to invest in the Erie. He's going to pass this guy can invest in the New York Haven. Why not, you know? Um, at the moment it's worth 67 bucks. And that's pretty much it then. That's probably then the end of the stock round. Okay, so after the first operating round here, B&O did a run of 440, the Canadian 230, C&O 230, the Pen 490, the NIC a very good run of 600, the Erie 190 and the New York New Haven 220. Um, the southern lines are pretty much done. There is no, no more room for improvement here. The only thing we can see is and that we also saw in this operating round was some uh, some tinkering here so that we could um, build a loop here with Boston somehow so that were a few improvements possible for the New York Central for the Erie possibly for the CNO you know for for these kind of guys there but um, Apart from that, there is not that much happening now in the operating rounds. That's also the reason why I'm writing things down now, just to avoid the counting again and again. So uh, let's do the second one now. Okay, so the Canadian doesn't go to Canada anymore. Until now, they had the best run going from the Canadian West here through Erie, like this, and then going back here to Canada. But now, they make actually more money by starting in Erie, going through here, then here Boston, down there, and then ending up in New York makes them 20 more bucks. So they are now at 250. So the CNO also had a big improvement now. Um, they can start down here and go like this through here. And then like this, down here, through here, and end up here. And that gives them 
320, which is clearly better than what they did before. Maybe I miscalculated before, or there was really such a massive change uh, due to... Um, it, it is possible that it changed quite a bit because of these uh, manipulations of the track in these areas here. I'm not absolutely sure about that. So it's the third operating round. Canadian did its run, paid out, and we got exactly two bucks left in the bank after that. So now it's official. Um, the game ending is triggered. We finish this operating round. I'm going to write now down the last revenues for every player. And then I'm going to show you uh, the last runs and the result. Okay, the game has come to an end. And uh, let me first show you the last routes that the Corporations, corporations ran. The Erie had 190 with a 5 train. So they started here in Erie and here and then they went down there over here and ended up in New York. Um, next one is the New York and New Hartford with 220 wasn't too great they have a five train so they did one two three four five um, then we got the Canadian with 250 I've also shown that start here in Erie go like that and then also they have a they have a six train actually and then they went here Boston down there one two and also end up in New York um, the C and O with uh, three hundred and twenty um, let me see I think they started down here like this went up here then like that then they went down there here 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 and finally there so that was a neat run they had a diesel um, Then it's the B and O. They started here in Chicago. They went down there, cross here, and uh, yeah, they went here. And then made this run here, that circle through New York, and ended up here. And uh, yeah, that was worth four hundred and forty. The pen was the only corporation with two trains. And the first train, the five train, went from Chicago down there, here, and then up here to Erie. I think that was 200 or something. And with the second train, which was the sixth train, they started. I think they started here and then basically just went like this here one two three four five six yeah exactly and that was worth 290 so overall they have uh, 490 which is really good and uh, the most powerful money maker by far was uh, the New York Central And uh, let me see, they started actually here. And they moved down there. Could incorporate that city. Moved here out. Boston, here, here, and here to New York. Managed their way here. This way, 
that way here, New York a second time, here, here again, then here, and then I ended up in Baltimore. That was a massive run. It was worth 630 bucks. And uh, yeah, they were actually, it's interesting to see, every single company um, ran through New York. Every one of them. You know, even the CNO, which is usually, which I saw operating here at the beginning of the game, that didn't matter at all anymore. They used this dot to do their to do their run, and it was much more efficient then. The fact that no one dotted, only New York was only dotted once, and yeah, that allowed the situation that everyone could run through there. And the New York Central managed to run through there even twice. And that's what gave them that much money. They were the only ones who had a real north-south connection here. They could go through here and through here. So they could use these big money-making areas completely, both of them. And that was pretty amazing. They could even go here to Erie. So yeah, they, they made a lot of money here. They, were, they covered basically the whole map except of this Chicago area here, but everything else was covered by the New York Central. It's interesting to see that this player here, he holds both the, the, boast, uh, the uh, both of the top money makers. He holds the presidency of both of them. Sadly, for of the pen, he only has four shares. But still, you know, these were the top money makers of the game here, at, at least at the later stage now. And he holds the presidency of both of them. I didn't count, uh, I didn't make a result yet. Um, but we clearly can see here, if we have a look at the runs. This guy made by far the most money out of revenues now. And it seems like... Yeah, then it's player 3 with a C&O and a B&O. And uh, player 4 is also making a lot of money with the pen, C&O, B&O here. Yeah, it's, and, and this player actually did pretty bad. The, the Erie and the Canadian... They made not a lot of money. So we're going to count now uh, the overall money and the share values and everything, and I'll let you know the result. Okay, so here are my results. And actually, there are not many surprises. This player, he has won. And that was actually something I that was to expect pretty much right from the beginning he did really really well with the B&O right from the beginning and it it remained a good performer all through the game maybe the moment when the when the big trains came out there were one or two rounds I think there was one round where it had to swallow or maybe there was a little bit of train juggling, maybe two rounds, I'm not sure, but there might have been two rounds, I think. But in general, the B&O was a fantastic performer, and although not the best, but um, if we take the whole course of the game, it was the strongest corporation, which probably made also pretty much the most money right from the beginning. So in the end he scored about $5,689 and of course this uh, the big share value of the B&O that was probably the main reason uh, but yeah anyway he had the best share value by far but also the the most money so um, yeah as I said no big surprise here the only surprise for me was actually that this guy did pretty poorly. And that is interesting because he had the two railroads which performed the best 
at the end of the game but it wasn't good enough um, he is actually in place four of the five players the worst guy is the investor this guy he never had a corporation investing is a good thing but problem is he invested also not in the best corporations he only holds two of the BNO one of the Canadian these are the two big corporations who made the most money and I mean he had two but still it's not that much right just uh, three of his shares came from these great corporations and the pen with four shares is pretty far behind when it comes to the value so uh, yeah he just didn't do well here and obviously he only scored, he only had about 4,374 bucks, but it's not that bad. That's kind of interesting to see that the guys at the end are all pretty close. The second player, uh, the second worst player, so this guy, player number five, is at 4,490, so just about, I don't know, 120 better than this guy and as I said that was for me the big surprise I saw him pretty much in second or something but he couldn't do it there was no chance for him to do it and he had a, a not a bad he had quite a bit of money uh, he's uh, the third here but his share value was so lousy you know I mean he only has a single share of one of the best corporations only a share of the per, of the Canadian the pen with four shares isn't that great New York Central okay but you know he, he doesn't no really great stuff there and uh, Then uh, in third place, it's uh, this guy here, the owner of the Canadian and the Erie. And I think he was doing pretty good at the beginning of the game. And at that time he held 40% of the BNO. And I think that was a very questionable decision to sell the shares of the BNO and start his own corporation. Um, I think he. The main problem was that he just, for a long, long time, he couldn't really do good runs with these two corporations. And they simply not, did not perform in a way that he expected. And then there was also for, uh, he, he didn't pay out a lot with the Erie tried to keep it in the yellow zone but then realized later that there is not enough time to uh, buy a lot of shares to get over the standard certificate limit so this whole uh, jiggling here with with shares in the yellow and red zone it doesn't really pay out that strategy might work but I don't know how to how to make it work I have no idea Maybe if you if you do it early in the game and and really keep the the, but it's tricky. You know, I thought if you do it early in the game, keep the share value low, then you have enough time to buy uh, a lot of shares. 
later but then you don't have the money so I really don't know how you can make I don't know how you can make money that way maybe it's more like a catch-up mechanism or so if if your shares drop completely you have the option to hold more but in the end it uh, as a strategy I think it's really questionable. Could have been interesting if the Boston Maine would have been out earlier. Maybe then it, it would have been more interesting. So in player two is this guy and that is a little bit of a surprise. He did really well. 5047. But okay, I mean, he also holds three shares of the B&O, which is pretty great. And uh, C&O is not doing too bad. It's the third most valuable corporation. So, yeah, it uh, was enough to... Especially he had a lot of money here. Um... So it was enough to uh, get to the second place here. So again, this guy first with the B and O, this guy with the C and O second. We got this player here with the Canadian third place. He New York Central and Penn fourth, and our poor investor was last. But as I said, the last three players were really close together. I think a few interesting questions come up after this game. For example, why did this guy, after he did so well at the beginning, why did he do so poorly or why, why, why couldn't he hold up with, with the other guy? I think actually I rolled twice a die here and first of all selling the B&O was, was yeah that, that was definitely a risk and maybe he should not have taken that so I don't know I wasn't sure about that either once I thought he definitely made a mistake and that was he could have forced out the big trains um, basically one cycle of operating rounds earlier and I rolled and only on a six uh, I said I'm not gonna do it and that six was rolled so we waited a little longer because he also had a few of the of the two trains well, it wasn't even the, the big trains. I think these were basically the... I'm not sure it was the... the I don't know if it was the two or the three trains. I'm not sure. But I, I remember I could have brought him quite a bit into trouble. I think it was the three trains that went away. And I also held some of them. So I wasn't sure if I want to get rid of these two. But, so I decided to, to continue for one more cycle or I rolled a die. But I think that was actually the point when I really should have, um, should have been gone for a bigger train, make the three trains disappear because in that way, at least this player with the B&O, He would have been in trouble. He probably had to pay quite a bit of his private um, income uh, to get a train for the B&O, although I'm not positive about that. I'm, I don't exactly know. Got to watch it again here. But I think that was an important decision uh, for the whole game. Another interesting question is this guy's uh, bad performance, although he had the two best performing railroads, the ones with the most 
with the most revenue at the end of the game. But it kind of shows that maybe that is not that important. To get there, he had to swallow a few times. And that costs you a lot of money. And in the end, he could only run four or five operating rounds at that really great performance. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a tough call often, you know, especially when you only hold, he only did hold four shares of one of the corporations. But yeah, it's, a, it's, it's really interesting. He had six shares of the New York Central. The New York Central had by far the best runs. But it just didn't pay out enough. And I'm always tempted, you know, to invest in the corporation, swallow maybe two or three times to get a D-train. And I think in, in this case, both of them did swallow together maybe three or four times, something like that. I think three times or so to really get the six, five and six train here and the D train here, which is awesome. But yeah, it just didn't pay out. And I think even if, it, if the game would have gone longer, I'm not sure if three more operating rounds would have really helped him. Hard to tell. Uh, I don't know that. I really don't. Probably not. Okay. So there's still a lot to learn in this game. A lot of things to understand better. And uh, yeah, as I said already at the beginning, this is for me a fascinating game. The whole 18xx series. What I've played... from the 18xx series is all fantastic until now. I just played 1830, 1856 and 1846 or three uh, a few times but I think there are even more interesting games with more crazy features and all kind of stuff out there that uh, that I can explore and I'm really eager to do that. When I play that game, from time to time I, I have to think about another game of the same designer which I also love and that is Civilization. And I think these two games actually have a lot in common, although it might not seem so at the very beginning if you, if you think about it. But if you take a closer look, both games have that they're kind of two games in one. And uh, there, there is that game about, well, you could say area control or, or yeah, some kind of, I don't know, maneuvering on the map. You know, this, this here you kind of lay your track and civilization, you lay your pieces. But yeah, it's this kind of area control mechanism that is going on on a map. And then you have that second game where you have to, um, in civilization, you have, well, it's both a financial game. You have to make deals. In civilization, you do the deals with the players. You do the deals on, on the stock market, on the stock rounds. And then you have to invest also in both, in both games uh, for future development, basically. It's, of course, there are also a lot of differences, but it's very interesting that both of these games share, share these ideas of, of, of two games, a financial game, a financial aspect, and a area control aspect, manipulation on the map, and that this, uh, what's ongoing on the map, gives you then the basics, uh, the earnings for your 
uh, financial operations. And that have, that's something that both games have in common, although they seem so, so different. Uh, but, yeah, if you, if you take a closer look, I think you can definitely see that. And I find that fascinating because they're so... Yeah, how, yeah, how, how these totally different games share... And, and they play totally different, you know? So they feel completely different and they have a different theme and all. But if you think about it, yeah, they have a lot in common in a way. And, uh, well, yeah, what can I say in, in, in addition to that? I just love that game. It's, it's super interesting, the different layers of the game, you know, once this manipulating on the map, the, the track laying and uh, all that. And then the stock market and the, the negotiations with the other players that might be also interesting, you know, if you want to do maybe a cooperation together, or, or stuff like that, you know, help each other out. So there is this, yeah, these totally different types of decisions you have to make in this game, they are really what fascinates me a lot. Okay, well then, uh, hope to see you on the next uh, video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.